Welcome to Pot Apostle. Help us build the kingdom of God. Like, subscribe, and share. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, right? What is the kingdom of God like? Well, Jesus gives us a couple of examples of mustard seed, something very small that grows, something very small like yeast mixed in that grows, that affects everything around it. You know, the kingdom of God is supposed to be within us. And we are supposed to carry the kingdom of God into the world like little bits of yeast in the world around us. Making things better. That's what we're, that's, that's what our Lord is saying. We pray daily, thy kingdom come, don't we? At least once a day, sometimes many times a day. Thy kingdom right here within us. And we are supposed to be like leaven in the world by God's grace. So we pray for that today, right? Thy kingdom come, not out there, in here. And we, and this is the thing, again, I, sometimes I say to people, you know, the surest path to insanity is to try to control things that are outside of your control, like somebody else's behavior, okay? You can control your own behavior, but God willing, the kingdom of God within you can be a leaven to the world around you. And there is this lifting, this lightness, this coming of the kingdom, thy kingdom come. So the first line of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians that we had the excerpt of today was be subordinate to one another. Oftentimes people miss that line and all they hear is wives be subordinate to your husbands, wives be subordinate to your husbands, wives be subordinate to your husbands. They miss be subordinate to one another. And they also miss this tremendous role that the husband has to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And listen to this, to cleanse her that she might be without, without spot or wrinkle that she might be holy and without blemish. Jesus challenges, I mean, St. Paul challenges husbands to be an, ancient, uh, an, an agent of holiness, leaven in the lives of their wives and families. Did you get that? Let me tell you a quick little story. I, I've had the great privilege of being involved in the Curcio movement for many years, many, many, many years. And if a husband goes to Curcio, right? What are the chances that his wife is gonna to want to go to Curcio? 90%. If a wife goes to Curcio and comes back and it's like all full of the Holy Spirit, what's the chances that the husband's gonna to wanna to go? A lot less. But if the husband leads the wife into a deeper relationship, she, you know, I hate to say this because I don't want to sound sexist in any way, shape, or form, but a wife wants her husband to lead her in faith. And this is what Paul is saying here. And, and I, I, how many times have I said this to my, my, my engaged couples that come to see me? In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should see that she respects her husband. You know, and, and so husbands, you love your wife and you want them to be holy without spot or wrinkle, growing in, in, in the Holy Spirit. And, and wives, you want to respect your husband. You want, it's written in your soul. And so if you don't, you know, I, I mean, that's, this is what I tell the prospective bride and groom, don't get married, you know. And, and if he's not going to, if you don't sense that this guy is trying to make you holier, don't marry him. It's, it's you know, the wisdom of the Bible. Sometimes we have to, we have to 
get the clutter of the modern world out of our ears and hear the beauty and the depths and the richness of what St. Paul was telling us in this uh, encouragement to husbands and wives. You know, the kingdom of God is to be within and we are to be leavened in the world. Let us pray for our families, thy kingdom come.